Hey y'all, N4H and H here. Uh, as you know, if you've been watching the channel for a while, I, uh, I've got problems with power line noise again, and it's been building for the last year and a half. I started calling the Georgia Power Company uh, a year and a half ago. And in the past, they have come out eventually. It, it did take a while sometimes, but they would get out here and, and fix it. At one time, it was uh, 15 over S9. It was so bad one time, it was affecting two meters. And so uh, they finally came out here and it took a few trips because, you know, they would f get the, uh, well, the power line, the three phase power lines out in front of my house were the worst. So they got those fixed. Well, then I was able to, I was, I say able to hear, but I was getting noise then from some uh, power poles that were a little bit further away. Now, you know, it's not the transformer as everybody always blames the transformer. It's almost never that. It's usually loose hardware, like nuts, bolts, um, a uh, dirty insulators, a blown lightning arrestor. That those were all all the above here for me. So as they changed out the glass insulators for this new polymer type, uh, which is what they did to the three uh, pole uh, three phase lines out front, um, and then they did it to the others as they worked on them. The noise um, continued to go lower. Uh, at one time they said, "Well, I think we're playing whack-a-mole." Well, okay, so they would get rid of the noise from the, the three-phase lines, then the one behind my house uh, at my neighbor's. Um, actually, it's a pole that feeds uh, both of us. And then there was uh, the next one down from it. And then uh, one time, both lightning arresters on our line were blown. And actually, they thanked me for uh, calling them out here that time, even though I think I had the feeling that they were a little irritated with me. But they're not allowed to produce RFI, radio frequency interference. So they are obligated to fix it. Um, one time I did have to call the FCC and uh, I have actually in the last week or so contacted the FCC again because I think a year and a half of ignoring my phone calls is uh, unacceptable. Last week I even called um, their, a different number, a main number and said, hey, is there someone else that I need to speak to about this? And they said, oh yeah, we'll have someone in engineering give you a call. Still no call. So I uh, had to break out uh, something again, and, and there's a, a whole uh, uh, playlist here on the channel about this device. Uh, but first of all, watch, look at the noise. RF gain's all the way up, I'm running amp one. I'm on 20 meter band, that's a POTA station. I think he's in Canada. And I will just tell you, this noise is so bad that the, the FTDX 5000 MP here, which has two noise blankers, neither of them can, can, one of them can knock it down a little bit, but not knock it out. I even got out my Yaesu FT890AT, which has the best noise blanker I've ever encountered. And uh, recently put out a video about it. Uh, well, I don't know. By the time you see this video, it may have been, may have been a couple of months. But even it couldn't knock this out. So it gets pretty horrendous at times and to the point where a, a noise blanker just can't deal with it. And, you know, we really don't, we should not have to resort to a noise, to a noise blanker. Uh, easy for me to say there. Um, because the noise blankers have inherent issues with them. You know, they can introduce distortion, they can degrade the receiver's selectivity. So it's really a band-aid, okay? The idea is to try to attack the problem before it ever gets to your radio. So with that, you see the little blue glow up there? I'm gonna pan up and that's what's doing it, the QRM eliminator. Now, I, I've said it before, there's a playlist about this and if you wanna see more details about how it's wired up, I encourage you to go to that playlist and, and watch those videos. Um, you know, I, I have to pull it out now because of this. Uh, you know, I don't always have it up there because I, I hasn't. It has been the case that the power line noise was intermittent. Sometimes, you know, there, sometimes not. Usually it's driven by dry air. The drier the air, uh, you know, the more arcing you're going to get. And that's what the noise is. It's arcing off the power poles uh, across that hardware. In fact, the way the power company finds where 
the arcs are coming from, and they use an infrared camera. And so uh, that's how they identify it, and then they know where to go, exactly where on the pole to go and what to tighten up or what to replace. And so that's literally what's causing the buzzing sound is arcing. And in our case here in America, that's 60 cycles or 60 hertz, 60 times per second. So the uh, QRM eliminator, unlike a noise blanker, works on a different principle. A noise blanker in the radio is literally shutting down or attenuating heavily the receiver chain. So it literally tracks where the pulse of, of noise is going is coming in, and then it learns that timing, and then it turns off the receiver uh, in the early stages. It just blanks it off for that brief, um, you know, milliseconds. And, you know, you can, uh, if the noise is really, really bad, you can, you've got adjustments in the radios to widen it, you know, to create, to, to make it more uh, intense. The problem is when you do all of that, you're going to, you're going to hear distortion. You're going to, you're going to have such wide blanks, if you will, in the audio, in the sound coming, signal coming through, um, that it goes into square wave. So that's not good. The other thing is, um, uh, like traditional noise blankers, even though they, many of them would work very well, they degrade your receive selectivity. You'll actually hear signals uh, outside of the pass band. You know, you might have a three kilohertz roofing filter dialed in, but you hear somebody six kilohertz away and you may think they're splattering. <laughs> and, and I've actually heard over the air, Somebody get into an argument with that about that, and it's, uh, if you have your noise blanker on, yeah, and, and they turn their noise blanker off, and it, the guy was not splattering. So, in fact, I won't accuse anybody of splattering before I check my uh, noise blanker, and if it's on, uh, I'll turn it off, and usually that is what, what the problem was. So, either way around, a noise blanker is not the solution. What this device does and honestly, I would just, let me just interject here. I would rather buy the one from TimeWave. Um, they have one called the TimeWave ANC-4. Uh, it's no doubt a better build quality. Um, and I've got another TimeWave device I've featured here on the channel. If you look in the FT890 uh, slash AT playlist, and I think it's, I think I may even have a DSP or a TimeWave playlist. Um, it was one of the earlier DSP units worked at, worked in audio at the audio frequency level, not IF, not intermediate frequency. Worked quite well, by the way, and has the best auto notch of any auto notch, or you know, called DNF in AC radios. Uh, nothing beats the one that uh, in that time wave. You you couldn't even tell it was working from a standpoint of well, you wouldn't hear any heterodyne but it didn't color the tone. It didn't change the way people sound like the IF based uh, auto notches will do. And so I trust TimeWave and I believe their ANC4 would be a much better solution uh, for this issue. But this one was recommended by a viewer while I would not ordinarily buy something off eBay and especially not from China. Um, these are kits you buy circuit board and different people assemble these their own way. But there's a lot of them out there that look very similar to this one. It's it's like people are buying the same kit. Some of them might put different type knobs on there. There's one where when you transmit, this light turns red. This Mine doesn't. Um, it is important, and I've showed it in the other videos, you do have to have a push-to-talk uh, cable plugged into these. I'll pull this one out and show it to you. And that's coming off of a Heil FS2 foot switch that I used to have to have to key my tube type amplifier. The foot switch does two things. It has two cables, one to key the radio, one to key the amplifier, and it keys the amplifier a split second before the radio, and it reverses that. It's, that timing is important. And uh, sadly, Heil is discontinuing that. Okay, so a lot, of the, a lot of people have gone to solid-state amps. A lot of us, like me, are using a cable that sends band data and keying information over to the amplifier directly from the radio, so those kind of cables aren't as needed anymore. But for devices like this that need to be told when you're transmitting so they can turn off their sensitive electronics uh, to keep this thing from getting blown, uh, well, you need that push-to-talk cable. Now, I will say I have had one from MFJ called the 1026 uh, model, MFJ 1026. It actually does work, um, but it wasn't very robust. It kept failing on me. It had a light bulb inside that you'd have to replace if it got RF into it. And I'm sorry, guys, but, you know, I live in a small lot. I use multiband antennas. 
I do choke everything, but you're gonna have some common mode current occasionally coming back in the shack. When you run an amplifier, it's gonna be enough that it could, and that was the thing. The MFJ device was so sensitive and so, and I, and I said, don't mean in a good way, it was susceptible to RF, and that bulb would blow, and the only thing you could do, you have to take it apart, you have to order the bulb from them, it was a very special bulb, and solder it in. This one so far has had no issue, no matter what power level I run, and um, so that part of it, I've, it's functional. It, it does its job. I just would feel better if it wasn't a Chinese device. And in the ANC4, just like the MFJ box, it's going to cost you uh, well over $200. This was $52 shipped. But I want to I wanted you to see this in action. So there's what I'm dealing with. You heard it at the beginning of the video. Almost S6 of noise. Now, I want to show you, now that he's not talking, I'll be able to show you this, how you adjust it. Now, gain one is my main antenna. That's the one I'm going to transmit on. Gain two is an auxiliary antenna. That's what it's called back here. And that's my off-center fed dipole. And the reason for that is it's not my best performer. My best performer is my doublet. Um, and, and second to that would be my ZS6BKW, which is in the doublet family. Um, so I chose the off-center fed to be my dedicated noise antenna. Now you may see some of these will come with a little telescopic antenna and all that's you just leave that in the box. It's useless. Uh, you know, unless the noise is coming from something nearby, like we're literally in the room with you in your shack, that is not really going to help. To knock out power line noise or other, other kinds of noise coming from the outside, um, you're going to need an antenna outside that's able to hear the same noise that your uh, main antenna is hearing. So I've got the main antenna's gain all the way up. And the idea here with the phase and the gain is you rotate this and, and watch the S meter and listen. Okay, you hear me right there nulled out the noise the most? Start with the phase knob up about middle ways. See the noise coming back and see it on the S meter? You can hear it. So that's about the best right there. And, and let me just warn you, if you get a device like this, don't expect the signal strength uh, to be the same on people. You know, through some of this nulling we're doing, you know, we're going to knock down uh, their uh, meter reading a little bit. You know me, I don't, I don't give S meter readings based on what that needle says. I, I go by ear. The needle will get you a, a relative reading. You could say to somebody, oh, yeah, you switched antennas and you went from a 7 to an 8. Okay, but is it really seven and eight? These meters are notorious on all the radios for being not exactly accurate. So don't worry that the meter's gonna drop a little bit. Remember on this channel, what do I say all the time? Signal to noise ratio. So hear him without any help. He's almost hitting seven if you wanna go by that. Now watch. Now he's around four, but we're not hearing as much grind. Well, look at that. See the grind come back? You can see it on the meter. Hear it? I'm able to take that noise down to about one and a half S units. Okay, so I just wanted you to see uh, one of these devices in action. Now, let me... Let me do a little bit of a loop back to something I said earlier. Remember, the noise blanker in the radio, it may get you by to some extent, but it can either introduce distortion or it can cause your selectivity to be degraded. Again, somebody outside the pass band is interfering with you, like you'll hear that you know sound like they're what they call bleed over, and you'll think it's them trashing up the band, and it's not, it's your noise blanker. What did I say? Best to take care of the noise before it ever enters your radio. This device is external to the radio. It's dealing at antenna level, and after it finishes working its little magic, then the signal goes to the radio. So the noise is being eliminated here before the radio ever has to deal with it.
Hey, before I end the video, I want to insert this footage. Um, look at that. You can see the noise on the scope here on the 75 meters, 80 meter band. And I'm running IPO2. Let me go. There you go. Look at that noise level. Now, you know me, I always, especially on these bands, I always run, run at least IPO, sometimes even attenuation. But what's this? Okay, watch it again. Sorry about the camera. I'm holding it with my hand right now. I didn't get out the tripod because I wanted to do this right quick. All right, now watch the difference it makes when I rotate these knobs down on this lower frequency. They're very sensitive. Watch. What's that S meter while I rotate? Okay, now the phase knob. Now that begs the question, how how well can it perform if I do hit it full? I would never do that on this band, but let's just do it. Here's what it is without it. And here we go with it. So really it knocked it down to where all I'm hearing now is atmospheric noise which that's that's normal I mean even on the higher bands you're gonna get some of that so it has eliminated the the pulses from the uh, power poles okay so I just thought that I would insert that one so you could see back to what I would normally do the run IPO and in, in fact on this rig I run IPO 2 for this band I would always run every level of IPO that's available to you before you kick in an attenuator um, and I will say um, when I'm in a rag chew here and everybody's super strong, I'll usually kick in, uh, you know, 6 to 12 dB of attenuation. Over on 160 meters, I'll go all the way to 18 dB of attenuation. Okay, just wanted to uh, plug this little clip in here to this video. Okay, I hope you found the video helpful and informative. Thank you to the Patreon support team who bring you these videos. If you're watching a video now, it's because of what I call the long haulers. They've uh, joined through the Patreon uh, program and supported this channel for a year and two and even more. Uh, those long haulers are what, you know, funds the channel enough that I can keep these videos coming. So, um, you know, I appreciate any, any level you can help though. Uh, there are three levels of support. You can find one that's comfortable for you if you like this type of content and want to see it continue. Uh, you can vote, as they say, vote with your wallet um, to help uh, offset the cost of doing this. To uh, join that team, go to www.patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. That's R-E-O-N.com forward slash N4H&H. And if you would, give the video a thumbs up, a like. That helps us out with YouTube's search algorithm and costs you nothing, and you're actually helping the channel uh, by doing that. And also consider subscribing to the channel. That helps as well. If you do subscribe, be sure to click the notification bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a new video, usually two a week, occasionally a third um, and also, finally, if you would, please share the link to this video on social media, text message, email, or phone a friend. Hey, thanks again for watching, and 73 from N4HNH.